guys, yasas, kekalos tirtate, which means hello and welcome to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're going to be making delicious and easy puff pastry danishes. They just have a few ingredients and you could just make this for brunch or for a delicious dessert any time of day. They go great with tea and coffee. Let's get started. So I love recipes that use puff pastry and I always have it in my freezer. I like to go to the restaurant supply store and get this kind of puff pastry and you might be able to find it in local Mediterranean or Middle Eastern specialty food stores. This is pre-cut puff pastry that's in squares and it is perfect for this recipe because you don't have to roll anything out or cut it out because it's ready to go. All you have to do is take them out and let them sit at room temperature for just a few minutes until they soften and they're easy to handle. You could also put them in your refrigerator overnight if you know you're going to do this, but that takes a lot of space so I always just do this a couple minutes before I make it. If you can't find these squares, then definitely use whatever you have and just roll out the puff pastry. I'll put all of the measurements and everything like that on the blog recipe on DemetrasDishes.com. So it's just been about five minutes and these are beginning to thaw out. As soon as they're pliable and they start to soften a little bit, then they're ready to be worked with. You don't want to let these soften up too much because then they're going to be hard to handle and sticky. While we're waiting a few more seconds, we're going to put together the mixture, the filling. So one part of the filling is cream cheese and you want it to be softened and you want to leave it at room temperature to do that for about 30 minutes or an hour or you could pop these in the microwave for a few seconds. And we're just going to flavor this with a little bit of lemon zest but you can definitely use orange zest if you wanted to. And I'm also going to add a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. If you want to add a little more richness you could do a quarter teaspoon or half teaspoon of almond extract as well. I'm just going to keep it simple today and I'm just going to mix this all up. I'm not adding any sugar to this because the there's going to be jam and preserves that are going to go on top and I feel like those are already sweet enough. But if you want to make it sweeter, you can taste it as you go and make it as sweet as you like. And just like that, the filling is ready. Like I said, if you want to sweeten it a little bit, you can surely do that. Now we're going to take one square at a time. And for this, you're going to need your favorite jam or preserves. I have some apricot jam here. I also have some blueberry. So use whatever you have and whatever you love. You don't eat, if you want to, you don't even have to do the cream cheese. You can do straight um, Nutella or your favorite chocolate hazelnut spread. If you like almond flavor, you can make some frangipan. I have a recipe that's going to be on the blog because I've used it in other recipes and you could use that along with some jam and some fruit. There are so many options, but I'm going to keep it simple today and do it this way. So anytime we're going somewhere and I want to make something really quick to bring it along, then um, we make these. And actually, I let Isa make them. He's really good at it. He's my 13-year-old son. And he made these the other day when I was going over my friend's house for tea. And I took a picture of it and shared it on Instagram and everybody wanted the recipe. So he's going to hop in in a little while and help me make these. Definitely get your kids involved because baking with them is going to help create beautiful memories. So we're going to take a little bit of the cream cheese mixture first. This looks like about a tablespoon. This is however much you want. That's how much you put in. But this looks about right and I'm going to put it on the center just like that. You can put less cream cheese and more preserves. More cream cheese and less preserves. It's up to you. And then I'm going to use this apricot spread here and put about a teaspoon in there. So another thing you want to have is some egg wash ready. So I have some egg yolks here. These are three egg yolks because I'm making a bigger batch. These freeze beautifully. And I'm going to add some milk to it. If you want to keep this egg free, then you can just brush some heavy cream on top. That would work too. But this not only works as a way to make it golden and beautiful on top, but it also works as a glue, as my son Isa just reminded me. So I'm just going to put a little bit on the top right here on this edge. This is going to help it stick together and press it down a bit. And then I'm going to put it on the baking tray that's lined with parchment paper. So again, we're going to take some cream cheese and put it in the center. And I'll take some more apricot spread right there. on the baking tray as well. So apparently the student has to teach the teacher. So I taught him how to do it, but he's found some tricks. So he told me that when you put it on the tray, just like this, then you're going to want to press the edges down a little bit. So that way it doesn't open up as much. It is still going to open up while baking. Press it down a little bit. And I think I got it right this time. Leave it on the tray. Now we're going to make one with just chocolate. So I have some chocolate hazelnut spread over here. And I'm just going to take a heaping teaspoonful and put it right there in the center. I'll put a little more because some of it is stuck on the spoon. And we'll do this one again with the points 
Now, if you want to, you can put a, slice of, a few slices of banana on top of that or even some strawberries, it's up to you. And let's get the edges right. There we go, we're gonna just squeeze them together because apparently this works better. <laughs> Press it down a little bit and on the tray it goes. So we're gonna keep making these different flavor combinations. I also have some blueberry jam here. You could do some just jam, some cream cheese and whatever flavor combination you like. And then once you're done, we're gonna brush them all with some egg wash so that we think they can get nice and golden. And we're gonna put them in the freezer for 30 minutes. You want them to set and to chill so that way they can puff up beautifully in the oven. The oven should be preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and bake these for about 20 to 25 minutes or until they're nice and golden and puffy. Every oven is different, so keep an eye on it. Me and Isar are gonna get to filling these all now and we'll show you what they look like as soon as they come out. So while the danishes are baking, we're gonna make an icing that's gonna go on top. This is totally optional, but it is gonna add a nice, an extra level of sweetness. You can definitely make it a cream cheese icing if you wanted to by just mixing in some cream cheese to this. All of these options are gonna be on the blog post, but I'm gonna keep it simple and just do a simple icing with some powdered sugar. I'm gonna take a cup of powdered sugar, also known as confectioner sugar, and put it in my bowl with some more lemon zest. Now, I have made icings with citrus juice and for some reason, they be, unless there's some cream cheese in there, if there's cream cheese in there, it balances out the flavor or even some mascarpone cheese. But when it's just straight up powdered sugar with citrus juice, it gives it a weird, I don't know, like a chemically type taste. So I'd prefer to put the zest in rather than the juice. It almost makes it taste like medicine if that makes any sense. I don't know, I don't like it. If you like it, use it. But I'm gonna go with the zest that looks like about a quarter teaspoon of zest, half a teaspoon of zest. And I'm also gonna put in a little splash of vanilla, just a little bit, like a half a teaspoon. And a couple tablespoons of milk. Let's start with like two. And we're gonna whisk this all together until it's nice and smooth. Now, the more liquid you put in here, the more translucent it's gonna get. So, so and it's also gonna get thinner, obviously. So get it to the thickness that you like. So if you like it a little bit thicker, you put more powdered sugar. If you like it a little bit thinner and more translucent, you can put more milk. It's all up to you. So that looks good to me. It's pourable. It's gonna become a little bit more smoother as it sits. I'm not gonna add any more milk to it because it's looking good. Again, if you want it to be a little bit creamier, you could put some mascarpone cheese in here or some cream cheese. That is fine and you, could, you're, you are gonna need a little bit more liquid a little bit more milk to thin it out if you choose to do that, but it is gonna be richer. So I'm gonna set this aside, and once they come out of the oven, you want them to cool down, and then once they're cool, you wanna drizzle this icing on top, and they're gonna be so delicious. Now here's a tip. Of course, you can make so many trays of this, if you're, if you're, especially if you get your puff pastry from the restaurant supply store, you're gonna have a lot of squares because these freeze beautifully. So make them, assemble the whole thing before baking, obviously. You wanna do these while they're unbaked. And then let them chill and harden in the freezer. Once they're nice and hard and chilled, you can transfer them into airtight bags or you can take the whole tray and wrap it with a garbage bag really tight and then keep it in your freezer for like two months. And every time somebody comes over for tea or every time you're craving something to serve with tea or coffee, take as many out and you bake them until they're nice and golden and you have a dessert ready in no time. I love to stock my freezer with things like that because you just never know when you're gonna need it. So once they come out and they're ready, I'll show you what they look like. Make yourself some Greek coffee or a nice cup of tea because these are going to go delicious with everything. Now everything is done. Of course, they cool down and I drizzle them with the beautiful glaze. And you're gonna notice that some of them opened up. Now, 
even though I made them and I taught how to do them and I know the right way to do it, you are going to have some that are funky and they're going to open up and that is totally fine. It's not a big deal because you can always dress them up with some fruit. I have some fresh blueberries and I'm going to put some blueberries in the ones that opened up and then I'm going to add the glaze on top and it is just going to look like the most elegant, delicate dessert ever. Your guests are going to love it, your family is going to love it and your mistake is going to be covered up if you really care about it. If you're just making it for yourself, I mean, if you're, if they open up, I'll still eat it. I have no problem. Send them my way. So I have some Greek coffee here, and I'm going to have one without the fruit, just because it's a little bit easier to eat. I'm going to pick this one with the blueberry and the cream cheese. Time to take a bite. Mm. Take it away. Somebody take it away, because I think I'm going to eat them all. So delicious. The puff pastry is buttery and flaky. The cream cheese has the perfect amount it's not sweet, which is what I like. It's creamy, and I love the freshness from the lemon and the floral vanilla in there. It just makes it taste so good. You could really taste it in the background. That blueberry, those blueberry preserves are amazing. Of course, I like the apricot too, so it was a tough decision. And that glaze on top makes it really nice and fresh because it's lemon flavored with the zest. So delicious. I need to have a little sip of coffee. Excuse me. Ah, yummy to wash down the sweetness. Perfection. I hope you give this a try. The recipe, as always, is in the description box down below. You can print it out on the website, DimitrasDishes.com. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. If you want to see more dessert recipes, you're going to want to click over here, and I will see you right over there. Yes, yes.